I had no idea what the hell I was doing. I started drinking with my mom for my 16th birthday, threw me a big kegger. She was right along with us, drinking. The keg thing, it wasn't just for Justin. We had ordered a keg for our friends, and we let them have some of the beer. My mother definitely hit me, pulled my hair, threw me against the wall, beat the crap out of me sometimes. I don't remember, but I, I could have. I could have pulled his hair. I could have grabbed his arm. I might have spanked him, but I never physically abused him. My worst memory is when I was 15, my mother said I had to go find somewhere to live. I definitely felt abandoned, so in return I would hurt the woman I was with before they were able to hurt me. Justin is 32 years old and he needs to own what he's doing. Get off the drugs, the drinking, quit womanizing. I feel I have paid my dues and it's time that we move on. Okay, now, Ashley, you wrote in, right? Yeah. And you're concerned about your brother. Yes. What do you think is going to happen to him if he doesn't change his course? Ultimately, I think that he'll either get himself into a situation um, with buying pills from somebody that he doesn't know or something, and that will go wrong, or he might end up in jail. You know, his anger and his rage might get out of control, and he might hurt somebody more than he intends to. Is she right to be concerned about you? Yes. Um, Are you damaged? <clears throat> yes, I feel like I am. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Are you making bad choices? Yes. Yes, I, I, I definitely feel like that. I kind of went down through what you've admitted to. You, you, you say you've slept, slept with over 300 women. <laughs> yeah. Probably yeah. more now. That was two years ago that I found out. <laughs> Three years ago, and I've met at least eight since then, so. Okay. Yeah, I definitely have a... So, 308 women. <laughs> um, what do you do in your spare time? <laughs> I mean, seriously, no. that's a lot of women. It is. Uh, yeah. And you say you don't even remember some of them. You don't know their names, their last names. Some of them, you don't even know their first names. Right. A lot of them, I would say, probably most of them, have either been one night stands or drunken incidents. Um, you say there are only two or three of your friends that he hasn't slept with. Yeah, when I was trying, when I wrote in, I was trying to talk to a bunch of my friends to see, you know, has he written you? But then I decided that I would literally have to post it on my status of my Facebook to everybody to see who it actually was because a lot of them wouldn't even tell me. I would hear about it from my husband or a friend of a friend and they would say, oh, did you know that your brother, you know, emailed so-and-so and asked, you know, if they're happily married or if they're into him or, and they never asked me because they said they didn't want him there. So this isn't the spur of the moment. You actually <laughs> recruit. Um, well, you know, she yeah, says you're, yes. you contact her married friends and say, are you happily married, and will you send me dirty pictures? Some of them you, you asked for dirty pictures. Some of them yeah. I have. Some of them I, I Tell definitely Tell me have. how you word that. <laughs> it's, I mean, no, you're, you you're at your keyboard, and you say, hi, well, this is Justin. Finish that sentence for me. How does that go? Well, it really doesn't, it doesn't just jump into that. It's, uh, you know. It starts with, hey, cutie, how are you? And that works. Hey, cutie, how are you? Mm -hmm. And he said some respond, and then, and then some don't. do you have any dirty pictures? No. <laughs> no, I do. I do. I mean, it is a casual conversation leading up to it. And, um, you know, and then eventually we get comfortable with each other. And then we start talking more intimately. And you agree that you drink heavily? Yes. How I much definitely. are you drinking? Uh, well, lately, for the past week and a half, I really haven't, except the other night I did have a beer and a half, but before that... Okay, so once you got booked to come on the show... No, <laughs> no seriously, you said once he got booked to I come said, on I the show... That, was a big uh, that, that really has a curative effect on a lot right. of people. No, no, I... I, I I, I drink. Like, I definitely know I have a problem with drinking, and it's usually anywhere from 12 to an 18-pack a day. Somehow or another, this is all her fault. You said straight up, this is my mother's fault. You didn't mince words about it. This is at her feet. I, it's not that I don't want to take responsibility as an adult for this, and I'm definitely not trying to make excuses, because as an adult, it is my issue. You do make excuses, though. 
I, I do make I do make you excuses. You told the producer also that on Thanksgiving you spent the whole time with me getting drunk, and that's a lie. You were at the bar with a girl, Justin. I have proof. Before you get too self righteous about this, at all. I mean, you haven't been exactly baking cookies and taking care of the kids when you were when they were growing up, right? I took care of my kids, but I did. I wasn't the perfect mom. No, absolutely not. And I don't remember ever beating them. You said, "quote I might have been physical with the kids when I was high, but I don't remember." was high a lot okay but i don't think that was the reason why i was physical i think i had anger <clears throat> issues of my own but, but you were physical out of, i you don't think it's out of anger i i probably grabbed their arm or i probably I pulled his hair before but and threw me up against the wall i don't remember doing that but maybe you were high look we're we're at the precipice here this is a moment and choices you make matter. Not every choice you make in your life matters. Do you have roast beef or turkey? It doesn't matter. I'm going to ask all of you some questions today, the answer to which I promise you is going to matter. Because it's going to determine what happens next. Now, Ashley says her mom's history of choosing dangerous men damn near got her killed and we're going to find out some of that history when we get back i've been married four times i did choose bad men when i was 15 her boyfriend john tried to kill her he threw her through a sliding glass door after she got out of the hospital she moved back in with him an all new Dr. Phil. I just picked a shovel and hit it with a Teens out of control. I was proud that she took up for herself. When you hit her with the shovel, she could have been killed. The exclusive stories. The toddler's mother was viciously attacked. People watched, but not one person intervened. Behind shocking videos. How did this girl go from an infant you ruined my life. to a tyrant? Let go! That's Monday. 21 News. I got in a horrible car accident with my mom's car. I was drinking that night. I went off the side of a cliff, tumbled down until a tree basically stopped the car and climbed out. I didn't have a cell phone. I had to walk until I found a house in the middle of nowhere. It was definitely something I shouldn't have lived through. The first thing my mother was concerned about was the fact that she lost her car. Ashley says her brother Justin is addicted to everything that you can just be addicted to. Justin admits he slept with at least 300 women. He drinks too much, but he blames his mother. I asked him about that earlier, and he started giving me socially appropriate answers. Well, I know I'm an adult, but when we asked him straight up in a pre-interview, he said, It's her fault. She wasn't there for me. She abandoned me, and she's ruined my life. And he hasn't got the guts to own it sitting here today backpedaling. And I don't like people to tell me one thing before they get here and something else once they do. You either man up and own it now or don't. I don't care. Now, Laura admits she hasn't been the best mom. She's had four husbands, a string of boyfriends, and always chooses the wrong man. Take a look at this. There was a lot of men in my mother's life. Exes, husbands, boyfriends. I've been married four times. I did choose bad men. When I was 15, her boyfriend John tried to kill her. He threw her through a sliding glass door, then doped her up, drove her around town, hoping she would bleed out. When I found out about the incident, I grabbed a baseball bat, headed for his house. The police were already there. I stormed past them, started swinging the baseball bat, and they passed me. I believe... There was something about a baseball bat, but I don't remember what happened. After she got out of the hospital, she moved back in with him. I think Justin feels I chose them over him. When I was 11, my stepfather tied a rope around my ankles and hung me upside down from a tree. I heard that Justin was screaming for help. I don't know how long no one's told me the whole story. It was just so horrible. Because I could let that happen. Well, I didn't let it happen. I didn't know about it, but. I'm really sorry that happened to you. 
Well, no, I, hey, hey, look at me. I'm really sorry that happened to you. And I mean that from the absolute bottom of my heart. I, I've, I've got two boys. And that's just not okay that that was done to you. And I'm sorry. Thank you. And I don't know what your priorities were at the time, but they certainly weren't your children. Where's his father right now? He's in prison. Okay, what's he in prison for? Murder. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I've seen my dad more in prison than I have outside of prison. Justin's dad committed murder. He was found guilty and he is serving life. My father and a friend of his went to a drug deal. There was a fight. My father got scared, shot one of the guys in the shoulder. They decided they would take this guy out into the woods and they shot him in the head. What Justin's dad did was horrible. It was easier to forgive my dad than my mom. Then, so you married her daddy. Um, he's deceased, right? Yeah. He, you watched him abuse her. Yes, he was abusive towards her. And uh, that's Mr. Charming that hung you up from a tree by yeah. your legs, uh, which made it easier to torture you. You agree that you didn't show your children love and affection? I had a hard, I have a hard time um, showing love and affection, probably because of what I went through when I was a kid. Mm -hmm. And um, you agree you didn't put your kids first. They weren't a priority. You wanted to party. That was first. Well, looking back on it now, that's what happened. But at the time, I was not thinking that. I always thought my kids were number one. Well, you said, and I quote, my kids revolved around my life, not the other way around. Well, that's how it ended up being, absolutely. Mm -hmm. You said you were emotionally abusive to your children and that he got the worst of it. Just by not being present, I yelled a lot. Yes, that's true. So you treat him like an adult, not a child? A lot of times I did, yes. But if they tried to show affection to you, you would yell at them to get off of you. I wouldn't yell at him. That's not what you told us. I never yelled at him for hugging me. I just, I yelled a lot. I yelled at them. There was a lot of yelling and screaming. Right. And I never knew what kind of mood you would be in. I, and if I, I tried to come up to you and tell you I love you or because I'm sitting at home waiting for you to come home, um, you might have been in a bad mood and just wanted nothing to do with me. I, I agree with you. I had I I was horrible, Justin. I was horrible in the way and I've I've talked to you over and over about this and you I've, would fight with Ashley's dad and you, you would leave and and take the children, but you'd leave Justin behind. No. That's what you told us. She would take us and I just I really in a rude way just don't remember Justin being around a lot. To it's, be honest, like I don't have all of my memories are my sister and I, and I don't. It's because I wasn't <clears throat> invited to come. And it's because when, especially when I became a teenager, I wasn't allowed to be involved in your guys' life. Did she come to your sporting events? Or none of, well, you came to maybe one or two of my, my events at school. But you, you, did draw, you didn't have any sporting events. Every soccer game I went to, Justin. Well, you had to because when I was, when I was, I was eight years old and you okay. had to give me and a Okay, and then ride. when you had drama in high school, I didn't go to your drama things? One or two. Justin. You, Mom, I, okay. trust me, I do, you may I, not remember, but I, I do remember. Him. And, you, you know, basketball, nothing. Everything when did I did. you play every, basketball in high school? In junior, junior high and high school. And then... It's not funny. I mean, no, it's not funny. It, it's not funny. I, I'm, I'm, uh, I, 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 I prefaced all this by saying what you say now is is critically important. I understand that. I have, I have sat down and I have tried. Well, I don't care what you've done then. I'm apologize. talking about what you do now. And I do. And, and I, you're waffling now. You're, you're, tr you're backpedaling and covering now. I'm not covering. I would be not very I, well. on everything. And 
I've apologized to you, and I've told you how bad it was, and I and I you, and I said I'm sorry, and the, the things I don't even remember, I'm sorry about. But this is how I feel. I feel like yes, you have said you're sorry. Every time I have tried to talk to you, it turns into you being a victim or something from your past, and it it blows up into a huge. And what argument. are you doing right now? You're blaming me. For your past. I'm here because when I look in the mirror, I see a lot of you and I get a lot of resentment towards you because I see you in me a lot. Okay. I've seen my mother cheat on all of her husbands. My mom was very sneaky. It's definitely a reason not to trust women. seen my mother cheat on all of her husbands. My mom asked me to lie to different men, lying about where she is, what she's doing. My mom was very sneaky. She would tell her husband that she was going to the store and she would take me along with her. That way there was no suspicion on where she was. Growing up seeing the manipulation and the lies and cheating with my mother, it's definitely reason not to trust women. Laura has been married and divorced four times and has had countless boyfriends in between. Her children, Justin, and excuse me, you're shaking your head no? Is there something wrong with I that? I didn't have countless boyfriends in between. Wow. I, I mean, uh, Ashley, have I, I mean. You've definitely, you've definitely had boyfriends while you were married and in between. So what do you all want to talk about? This is why I wrote in. Because well, you're talking to yourself because let me tell you, you guys, uh, everything I'm saying, you're saying, nope, nope, didn't happen. I ask you, and then you go, well, sort of, I kind of said that. They told me. Let me tell you. I, well, I'm it, just saying that I don't no, remember look. Justin ever being with us, but like I told them, I was young when my dad was abusing her. He left by the time I was six years old. So the memories that I have of that abuse and that leaving, I don't remember how most of those fights ended. And the times that I do remember them ending were times that my brother hid me in a closet to okay. keep me from. Wait a second. When we do interviews here, we transcribe them. Yes. And then they put them on blue cards for me, yes. the significant things that I tell them that I want for interviews because I think they're noteworthy. And we have things here, according to, Yes. this would be you, Yes. this would be your mother, mm -hmm. fought with Ashley's dad, would take Ashley and sister away for a day or two, left Justin behind. Nobody ever fought over Justin. Justin never got the same attention as she did. Laura didn't hide daughters, um, didn't hide this that daughters true. were her favorite. Okay. Did you say that or I'm, did you not say that? Yes, I said okay, that. Okay, so you two did say that. No, I understand two that. Two separate occasions, though. So those two things are blended together. That no, they're not it blended wasn't together. Every single no, time look here. She got those are two different. No, Justin those are two separate away. points. I didn't talk to no, them together. These, those are two separate this points. Is two separate. That's all. Okay. Okay. So. It's, I just feel like there's a lot, and I understand that we have to condense it. But when it said that every single time that she got in a physical fight, okay. most of the time we didn't Have leave. you heard me say the words? No. Every single time? No. I am very precise. I have an incredible memory. Yes. Test me. No, I, I don't want to test you, but I also don't. I can, and I've also got videotape I can play back. be worse than it already no, is. No, it doesn't. I guess that's... And you either want to address and fix this problem or you don't. Listen, I'm here to help people that want to be helped. If you want to come here and... I feel like in me agreeing with that and saying that gives him that much more excuse to be but the way he is. But that's not your problem. You're not here to fix him. I am. No, but that's hard for me because that's always been my job. But it's not your job now. Don't do my job. What do you want to do? What are you here for and what do you want from me? Because you are being extremely obstructionist right now. Sorry, I want you to take this off of my hands and that's probably why I'm being quiet. You, you, t you told us you were afraid of making your mother mad. I am. Of course I am. Say whatever you want. I feel like I constantly have to walk on eggshells with her because I don't want to send her off the edge. And then that be my fault and me have that blame on my shoulders. And I don't want to sit out here and say that it is all her fault because, 
am just on his side making the excuse. Oh, oh my God. I think they both use their childhood. So you're as... managing me. I'm sorry. You're managing the process. Did it bother you that I told him I was sorry this happened to him? No, it didn't. Did bother it bother me. you that I told him he has zero accountability for what happened to him as a child? No, but that's why I was sitting quiet. No, but what? What's the but? The, you told me that I was sitting here quietly and must be saying it to myself. So I'm trying to talk with you, and all I know how to do is manage. Ashley's always, Ashley is currently and always kind of has been for many years, been our family's go to person, uh, go to therapist, go to best friend. So Ashley has a lot of weight on her shoulders and she does tiptoe around our feelings to try to make us feel better um, constantly. But that's why we are here, so she doesn't have to do that. And we can move forward and hopefully talk productively in in a healthy manner because i i feel i felt anytime i have to try to communicate something with my mother i do have to go through ashley I just want to hear what you i really want to no, apparently you. you don't I, apparently you I want do. to manage this situation apparently you want to deflect the situation i don't want to deflect it i and own what apparently i did you're willing for all of this to happen because it takes the focus off of you and then you no. skate your ass out of here like you do every other time never seen you guys get beat. You beat me and told me I need to keep my mouth shut. I beat you? Yes. Close captioning provided by... You know, Laura's children, Justin and Ashley, say their mother makes horrible decisions when it comes to men, I think. I think that's what they said. I do. And I think they say she currently lives with a man who is 25 years younger than her. Laura claims she's just friends with her roommate. But Justin and Ashley say they're not so sure about that. My mother has a very inappropriate relationship with a much younger kid. He was 14 or 15 when he really started coming around. He was 17. He is my youngest sister's ex-boyfriend. I was in an argument with my mother. I was saying to her, why is he always around? Why does she want me around? I screwed up with my kids. I figured maybe I could help somebody. I just thought I could be the savior. They've lived together for six years. They bought a house together. She has always told me that she did have inappropriate feelings, but it was never a sexual relationship. My gut says that there was a sexual relationship. Uh, does that matter to you that there is or isn't? No. I mean, I... The sexual relationship, no. It's, it's more about the feeling of, I don't know why he was... I know he had a troubled childhood... I felt like I did too, and I just didn't understand why I couldn't be around or partake in your life as a teenager, and he was good enough for that. Because you didn't allow me at that time when I was, when I was, when I did take him in, you wouldn't, it was, you, you wouldn't let me. You chose him over us, though. It didn't matter what the fight was or what the argument was or what happened. Your feelings came first and his followed shortly after. I wouldn't say I chose him over you. I just know what he went through, and I had the similar situation. So I, I okay, I chose him. And I'm sorry, and but just in the time that you guys got in a fight, it's because Ash, you were in my house drunk with Ashley and our other sibling, your other sibling, and Ashley, you yeah. Ashley slapped you, and you pushed your other sibling. It wasn't anything about me. It had nothing to do with me. You, you had compassion for him because of what he went through. Yes. As compared to your own son? At the time, yes. So he went through um, I didn't know what Justin went than... through. I didn't know what Justin was going through. I, like the hanging, I didn't know that. He, no one told me anything about that. And I've never seen you guys get beat. Mom, you... you... I mean, I did grab your arm. And I have pulled, I pulled your hair. I have done that, but... Mom, I've you, never seen a man beat you ever. You've you've put your hands on me when I, I was very that. young, seven or eight years old, because I accidentally told on you that you were smoking weed at a family function, and you took me down. 
He took me down the driveway, out of the out out from the side of the house. He took me out of what the car. House was that? I don't, okay, it Your doesn't matter what house. And and you beat me and told me I need to keep my mouth shut. I beat you. Yes. I don't I don't remember that, Doctor Field. But I'm I'm not going to argue with them. I don't want to be tit for tat here. Yeah. The, okay. Coming up, Laura says Justin hates her and doesn't even look at her like his mother. Uh, I'm going to ask Justin about that, and then I have a whole lot to say to Justin when we come back. My mom needs to feel in control. If she can't manipulate something, then she'll escape from the problem and she'll run away, whether that be shutting off her phone or avoiding that person altogether. My mother is a mental midget. She makes uh, childish decisions, she throws tantrums, and I don't think she's mentally matured over the years. Monday on an all-new Dr. Phil. The videos will shock you. When you hit her with the shovel, she could have been killed. Teens out of control. How did this girl go from an infant to a tyrant? Let go! That's Monday. Closed captioning provided by... Awesome. My mom never showed my brother the same love and affection that she showed me. She treated Justin differently. When my brother was about 19 years old, we had Christmas. He had about four or five presents. I had about 20. Never really thought why my mom wanted my sisters and not me. But there were definitely times where I questioned, why doesn't my mom want me around? What did I do? Well, Ashley and her brother Justin uh, says her brother Justin is addicted to everything and contacted the show multiple times desperate to get help uh, for her brother. She wants to get him straightened out. She genuinely cares about his con and is concerned about her brother. And uh, she seems to be really getting in the way of the conversation to try to help him. Why? Because that's what children in dysfunctional families do. They assume roles. Her role is the fixer. So all of you at home that are sitting there thinking, Dr. Phil, do you not get it? Uh, children of alcoholic parents, children of addicted parents become the parents. They become the fixers. They become codependent. They become the ones that mother the siblings. Yes, I get it. It's just not useful right now. Uh, Justin admits he's addicted to sex, pain pills, and alcohol. He blames his mother, Laura. He backpedals on it at times. He owns it at other times. Laura admits, sort of, that she neglected Justin as a child because she was too consumed with men and marijuana. Do you two mind changing chairs so I can talk to your brother uh, a little more directly? It's not rejection. I just want to know where I can <coughs> cuff him up beside the head if I feel like I need to. Um, look, Justin, you are in a very dysfunctional family. Would you agree? Yes, definitely. And um, your mother, um, I am going to tell you, came from a very dysfunctional family. Yes. Can we agree on that? Absolutely. Uh, so damage begets damage, which begets damage. And you now have a child. Right. Four-year-old daughter. Yes. And so you are the star to which she has hooked her wagon. Yeah. And so you are damaged. So she has hooked her wagon to a damaged star, pulling her through life. Right. Um, and so you say you are addicted. Yes. And the problem is that legacies get passed on from generation to generation and there's a lot about your mother that you really resent yes but yet you mimic her a lot in your life right right i drew a comparison between you and your mother your mom was largely absent during your childhood would you agree yes laura's mom was absent during her childhood and your mom was absent during your childhood. Laura's father was an alcoholic and absent. 
And your father was a drug dealer, addict, and absent. Yes. Laura drank and smoked pot in high school and experimented with cocaine. You drank and smoked pot in high school and experimented with cocaine. Laura relied on marijuana as an adult. You rely on alcohol and pills as an adult. Right. Right? Uh, Laura has had four husbands and numerous boyfriends, and you've had at least 70 girlfriends that you've brought around that people have seen. The parallels are amazing. Yes, I would agree. Tragically amazing. I would definitely agree to that. Hey, Dr. Phil here. Did you know that more than 16 million kids in the U.S. are at risk of hunger each day? Join me and visit feedingamerica.org. Phil. Doesn't your daughter deserve better? Absolutely. That's why I'm here. Absolutely. And I said... You have zero accountability for what happened to you as a child. You have zero accountability for being born to parents that had higher priorities, that had pathology. You have zero accountability for that. But you have 100% responsibility for what choices you make now. Right. As an adult. Right. That hill in front of you may be very steep. Seems like it. But it is still yours to climb. If she is responsible for creating damage in you, and I have no doubt that she and your father and other adults in your life have done damage to you, no doubt about it. Fair or unfair, it is your job to clean it up. It is your responsibility to clean it up. And, and you say you've slept with 300 women. You're either very charming or you have very low standards. Maybe both. <laughs> no. Are you I, worried about, like, STDs? I have, I have been tested in the last year. Because let me tell you, the women that, if you slept with 300 women, if they're sleeping with you, they must not be very discriminating, just simply by the fact that, that you've slept with 299 other women. I mean, just by that fact alone, I mean, and they're sleeping with you, you'd think that, 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 I mean, they must, I mean, come on. <laughs> no, I... I On number 261, okay. <laughs> Sign me up. I, uh, no, I, I, I definitely, I definitely agree. I definitely agree that, you know, this is a huge issue and I want to face it. I want to talk about it and I want to overcome it because it is, it is a problem. Are you an alcoholic? Yes, I'm an alcoholic. You addicted been. to pain pills? Yes, I am addicted to pain pills. I would say I'm addicted to anything I can almost latch on to. Yeah. Well, up next, Laura says even though she prioritized partying over parenting, Justin needs to stop blaming her for his problems. Uh, that may be the one thing we agree on, she and I, in this whole thing. Um, he's going to have to turn that loose because it doesn't help him fix this problem. We'll be right back. I do have a great relationship with my grandkids. I would not leave my daughter alone with my mother. And Ashley doesn't let anybody watch her children. They could hurt themselves under her supervision. Justin's daughter, I don't get to see as much because she lives somewhere else. She doesn't pick up the phone to talk to my daughter. When we're on the phone, she doesn't ask about my daughter. My mother doesn't care about anything about herself. Closed captioning provided by... Don't hide. Hide your cold sore while you treat it. New Carmex Cold Sore Treatment blocks pain and itch while making your cold sore less noticeable. Get your coupon now.
commitment to severe Crohn's disease is tough, but I've managed. Except that managing my symptoms was all I was doing. And when I finally told my doctor, he said Humira is for adults like me who've tried other medications but still experience the symptoms of moderate to severe Crohn's disease. And then in clinical studies, the majority of patients on Humira saw significant symptom relief and many achieved remission. Humira can lower your ability to fight infections, including tuberculosis. Serious, sometimes fatal infections and cancers, including lymphoma, have happened, as have blood, liver, and nervous system problems, serious allergic reactions, and new or worsening heart failure. Before treatment, get tested for TB. Tell your doctor if you've been to areas where certain fungal infections are common, and if you've had TB, hepatitis B, are prone to infections, or have flu-like symptoms or sores. Don't star Humira if you have an infection. Ask your gastroenterologist about Humira. With Humira, remission is possible. Have you been hurt on the job? Pennsylvania's workers' compensation laws can be complicated. Workers who are injured can make mistakes, costing them thousands of dollars. If you've been hurt on the job, call Handler, Henning, and Rosenberg at 1-800-LAW-4000. I was tired of my chronic constipation and the way it made me feel, the discomfort, the bloating, the straining. I just felt this way for too long. So I finally talked to my doctor about my symptoms. I tried laxatives before. He prescribed Amatiza Lubiprostone for my chronic constipation. It works differently than laxatives. Amatiza is clinically shown to help relieve common symptoms like bloating, abdominal discomfort, hard stools, and straining, and help people with chronic constipation go more often. Don't take Amatiza if you have a bowel blockage or severe diarrhea. Tell your doctor if your nausea or diarrhea becomes severe, or if you experience chest tightness or shortness of breath. The most common side effects are nausea, diarrhea, and headache. Amatiza helped me find relief from my chronic constipation. Ask your doctor if Amatiza is right for you. In 2014, CBS 21 News brought you the stories that gripped our communities, protected you through the storms, and stood up for your hard-earned money throughout this year. And for all those ahead, stay with CBS 21 News. Ready to get real? Go to DrPhil.com for advice on relationships, parenting, finances, and more. Plus, weigh in on your favorite episodes, share your stories, and find support in the Dr. Phil community. When you sign up for the community, you will automatically be subscribed to the Dr. Phil Show newsletter. Log on to DrPhil.com today. You know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell you what I, I think needs to happen with you first and then with this family um, in general. You look so international. Girl, what's your name? I have to know. Ain't no one else in your lane. Let's fill this call with gas and go. No hesitation. I'm on it. If that's the way that you want it. That's cool with me, so let's ride. Let's go somewhere that you lie. Um, when I'm talking to an alcoholic and a, a drug addict, you got to get yourself clean. I mean, that's the first thing uh, above all else because um, no matter what we may say here and do, uh, if, if those substances have a grip on you, you, you leave here and I'm not there and we're not in this moment, then that lifestyle is going to suck you right back up into it. You need to get yourself clean and sober. I am willing to put you into the Origins Recovery Center on South Padre Island. And this is a dual diagnosis treatment center and not just a straight rehab program. And I'll tell you why that's important. Because dual diagnosis means they're going to deal with the psychological issues that are going on with you in terms of the trauma and the damage that you suffered self-esteem and self-worth wise and heal some of the open wounds that you have in you while they get you cleaned up and detoxified and i i really recommend 
that you do that. That is my gift to you. That's not you. no expense to you. I will make that available to you. Um, and, and, and and put you put you into that program. Will you take that help and do that? Absolutely. Thank you. And you're the fixer here, and and you're you've really become so absorbed in all of this. You really need some help, and you know one of the resources we have here is is a company that I have called Doctor on Demand, and um, this is. Um, a, a national resource that we have that I'm really excited to say that we've added psychological services to and it is so cool and I, I want to start that with you because it allows you from the anonymity and the comfort of your own home on your computer or your cell phone by appointment to click and be face to face with a I will hand pick for you a, a PhD level therapist that you can talk to that's going to help you with the issues here so that you become part of the solution instead of part of the problem here Thank you. and so I'm going to make that arrangement for you, you. Um, and we'll get that done we, that work for you Okay, and so I'll, I'll, I'll have you talk to a representative backstage. It'll help you set up for Doctor on Demand for thank that. You. Okay, all right. I want to thank all of my guests today. A special thanks to the folks at Origins Recovery Center. Uh, be sure to log on to drphil.com to learn more about Doctor on Demand and the psychological services that we now offer on that site. We'll see you next time. We're